Okay, I haven't made a video for a long time now. This is number seven, uh, the seventh tiny house I've made. Um, it was a second-hand uh, chassis. It was three meters, and no, it was about 2.4. I extended it to 3.6, reinforced it, moved the uh, moved the axle, and did a whole bunch of stuff. But uh, and, and built this Vado. It's really a bit of a copy of. Uh, a renowned tiny house called the Paleo Vado um, in the US, which I've always liked the lines of, and I wanted to actually just explore it. Um, and um, it's tin on the outside, then uh, 50 millimeter, uh, sorry, then uh, zinc alum, uh, double sided reflective foil. Um, then 50 millimeter spun polyester. Well, you can see with the sun here, it's really bright. Did a little bit of artwork on the on the front, just to sort of break up the lines. Um, the nice thing is that the oh sorry, I spun polyester and uh, then a bit of a breathable membrane and then uh, OSB. It's got these little boxes on the outside. And so some have got water in, some have got batteries, some have got uh, um, in the shower story. Um, I've got a little shower pump so you can just go fetch water from whatever or, or plug it into a tap. And then the, the 12 volt pump just pumps it straight up into the shower unit. It's got a nice little set of stairs, stable door. Um, so the, the experiment here was to have a wet area as you whoops as you come in. So here's uh, it's not the ideal little cell phone camera width wise. Uh, so here's a little gas geyser. Um, so you can have a, use it as a shower. Or you can use it into the basin. There's a composting toilet down there with uh, the composting material. Drain straight through the floorboard. And here's a little. Uh, kitchen unit, gas stove, gas bottle, little cooler box. Yeah, nothing's really finished, it's just very temporary at the moment. And then I've got this really nice Perspex show gear. I don't know if you can actually see it because uh, it's all bloody white. Blind, which just slides beautifully out of the way. Um, but the nice thing is from the inside. Um, it gives you two completely separate areas uh, with a sort of Goshi blind, Japanese blind in the middle. I had three windows here, the two opening, one closed, and there was just too much light, so I'm blocking that out. I'm going to still put something in there. I'm not quite sure what the red matches the outside. Um, I used some old baskets and then just made the cupboard to fit the baskets. It was easier than making drawers. Uh, that was an old second-hand couch. I just cut it in. It was a sleeper couch. I cut it in half and I used the base. I could have got foam, but it was a hell of a lot simpler. Sliding table, very traditional. It's a single bed. I think I made a mistake. I should have gone double. It's a little bit squashed, a little bit narrow. And lots of cupboard space here. You can see all OSB. It's got uh, 12 volt lighting and it's got AC spotlights, AC spotlights, 12 volt lighting, uh, a little, made my own little plugs and um, so I think that's about it, it's an OSB floor, so a lot of OSB in here, it was an experiment, the experiment here as well as the, the bathroom experiment which worked pretty well, I'm quite happy with it, is these are the smallest dimensions I've ever worked with. It's just over a bed size in, in width, and it's 3.6 meters long, and it's just over uh, 1.9 high inside. And it's just on the edge for me of getting a little bit uh, squashed. So this is about this is as, as, as small as I would recommend. I think I found the the. The minimal sort of limit. So I would go, I would have gone double bed, and ideally I would have gone a little bit higher and a little bit wider. But otherwise, this first part of the arrangement works exceptionally well. I'm sort of talking and pointing the cell phone roughly in the direction. Hopefully, you can see what's going on here. Uh, so, yeah.
yeah, is there any more here? Um, yeah, it, you can see it had quite a powerful trailer. I had to chop it. it was a for a beekeeper. It had to, uh, about two, three hundred kilograms of steel fencing around. I had to chop that all off and turn it into a flatbed. And I've put the little parking posts underneath, which I obviously have to take off. I can't just slide them up because they bump into the bottom. But they work well. I've just got two parking posts here and a normal jockey wheel on the other end. Um, and I think that's about it. Uh, you can always contact me by email if there's anything in particular you'd like to know.